Welcome to episode 16 of the Truth and Legend podcast. Today we have a couple of friends that have been on the Wild and Exposed podcast, and now we got them on the Truth and Legend podcast. And it's cool because they just opened up a gallery in Anchorage, Alaska, and I thought it'd just be fun to talk about that whole process. Uh, small business things, what's coming up for the summer. You guys do a lot of small tours. So all that stuff will get wrapped up into this conversation. Welcome to Kate and Adam Rice. They are from, wow, where are you guys from now? I think probably just say Alaska, Utah, Minnesota. Yeah, it's mostly, we usually say either Montana or Alaska because we're, we're either in Montana or we're in Alaska. We're originally from Minnesota. Montana. Yeah, yeah. Utah, we're not we're not affiliated with Utah much at all anymore. So, so what's going on up there? You guys just opened up a gallery, get kind of bring us up to speed as to what, where you're at right now. Yeah. So we're actually sitting in the gallery. We've been open for several weeks. We came up and opened, um, for the Ferrandi festival. People don't know what that is. It's short for for rendezvous. It's been around for, a really long time. It's a historical festival where fur traders used to come to Alaska and trade their furs in the winter time. And it just kind of evolved into what it is today. Now they have events like the running of the reindeer, which is like the running of the bulls, but with reindeer, uh, which is pretty comical. Um, there are events all over town for about a two week stretch. Um, and the big events happen right in front of our door which includes sprint races for the sled dogs and also the ceremonial start for the Iditarod. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Last summer, you guys, we were all up in Alaska and we were talking and you were like, huh, we think we might open up a gallery. And I know you guys started looking at places and then you we made it through most of the summer and one of the spots you had your eye on got rented before you guys had the chance to make a decision and you're like, oh, well, whatever. And then you fast forward a couple of months or a month. I don't even know when it was. And the place did fell through. Whoever had yep. it locked down fell out. Right. And then yep. now, and then you guys texted me and you're like, so it might be available again. And so there you are. So how did that process all fall out? And was that like emergency status and you had to make yeah. a decision really fast or how did that go down? Yeah. yeah. We, you know, we were pretty heartbroken. I think in the summer when we found out we really had our hearts set on this place and it, you know, when you just feel like a decision is right. And we were like, no, I see myself in this place. I know this is the place. And when it fell through, we were just like, Oh, I don't get it. This feels so right. And, you know, and then we just carried about the fall and, went back south to the lower 48 and went home to see family in Minnesota. And then we got a call in December and they were like, well, we never could come to terms. So do you want it? And we knew about that Ferrandi festival. We knew it would be kind of like a good opportunity for us to learn yeah. um, and get ready for the summer. So we scrambled like hard. I don't even think we told anybody but our family that we were opening a gallery and we just like went to work hardcore and yeah. like made it happen. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty, pretty hectic. We, uh, I think we officially signed the lease for the, for the space like the 15th of January or 16th of January and the Ferrandi festival started on the 23rd of February. So there, that was a mad dash, you know, it was completely empty when we got here. And so I, the, we really scrambled to get it done. And there was a lot that we were working on even before we signed the lease, cause we were scrambling to get images ready and have, have stuff ready and have a plan. Like what images are we, we going to offer? You know, we've written, we've written stories for all of the images, um, named everything. I mean, all that stuff that you don't think about with opening a gallery, like we had to do all that. We've done all of that since early December. <laughs> yeah. And then we had winter tours in Yellowstone on top of that. So I actually came up end of January, uh, right after we signed the lease and I was here for, I don't know, three or four weeks before Adam came yeah. up to help. Yeah. By herself. So, yeah. Yep. So did you guys have to paint and do all that kind of stuff or what, what level of work did you start at? Thankfully, the space is perfect for what we wanted. It's got like beautiful wood floors. It had a fresh coat of white paint, which I wouldn't have chosen white, but we didn't have time to paint. So uh, we went with that. And then it's got a really beautiful like black industrial 
ceiling with gallery lighting already. So the space was ready. It was just a matter of like getting our images here, matting prints, which we've never really matted prints before. So that was a whole thing. Like the learning curve was like yeah. so big. Yeah. <laughs> like the things you don't think about that go into a gallery and the time that it takes. Like we learned really quick that it was not going to be just a simple job. Yeah. So. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that you don't think about if you don't print your images a lot anyways is, uh, you know, everything looks, looks way darker when you print it. If you're just primarily looking at it on a computer screen, cause it's backlit so, and even images that look really, really good. You know, if it's like a super dark and moody image, it might not read at all on paper or metal or canvas or however you try to print. So you have to do a lot of like four print adjustments to make sure it looks like you need it to. So that's a learning thing too, is that we did a lot of test prints with our whole batch of images, multiple rounds, just to kind of tweak everything and get it dialed in. Plus coming up with a system for organizing and knowing like which ones are ready for print. And then once you have your, you know, big file ready for print, you have to size that for every size that you're going to print in. And a lot of people even sharpen for that size and might even adjust based on what medium you're going to print on. So yeah. thinking through that and making all those choices and being organized about it, like took us a really long time. Yeah. I can't even like fathom the amount of work. <laughs> I, don't, I, would, I just want to like melt into a little puddle and go, you know, down a drain somewhere. Cause it just seems like insurmountable as far as everything you had to think about. Cause yeah. you have a whole inventory system now too. And then you got drop. Yeah. You're, I'm sure you're going to drop ship a lot of stuff because yep. people don't want to carry stuff back and forth. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, it's, and then you got to find a place to live and then you got to, it's somewhere in there. You got to eat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do we, I think I've drank a lot of beer. Yeah, I don't know about eating. Alcohol consumption is not. Yeah. <laughs> I've developed an eye twitch. <laughs> <laughs> It won't go away. I think it's a combination of too much caffeine and lack of sleep. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So was that all through trial and error? Or did you have expectations going into this? Like, okay, we're going to have some level of like printing on metal versus a canvas and all these different things. Um, I'm super thankful for several friends, one of which is Heidi Pinkerton in Minnesota. So huge shout out to her. She's been printing for a really long time and, um, was so helpful, like throughout the process and giving us advice. Dave Shumway, a good friend of ours, has done a lot of printing. And then uh, Amy Gerber as well has a gallery in Cody. So we, I don't think we could have just done it on our own. So we're so thankful for the friendships and connections we've made over the years that really helped us a lot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. If we would have had to just start from square one and figure out all these things, by trial and error, I think we'd still be trying to figure it all out. I don't think we'd be open right now. Like with the big stuff that's behind you, that big print that's behind you, did you print that in Alaska or did you ship it up? Because the cost of shipping to Alaska is huge too, right? That's mm -hmm. just all those yeah. costs that you incur. Yeah. Plus a lot of the items on our walls are metal prints because that's really popular right now. And those not only have to get shipped, but they have to be crated and you have to pay per crate. And I think you can only have three items in a crate and that adds to the shipping cost. And so, yeah, it was a lot to think through and we worked uh, with Bay Photo, thankfully, to make that happen. Yep. When you guys opened, you were trying to hit that for Ronde. Is Was that an exciting time? I've never been there. Obviously, Eric lives there, so he's been there and done that whole thing. Is that an exciting, like, stuff? Are the streets busy and... Oh yeah. What's it like? Yeah. I mean, there was, uh, for, especially for the sled dog races. So like the first weekend has the world championship sled dog races, which are out and back sprints. Um, so they, they do the, they send teams out at two minute intervals and they go out to a point and then race back and then the best time, uh, wins. I think they do it for three days. So they add to three times together. Um, that, so it was super packed when that was happening and it was a lot of fun to see the teams with the dogs, like the dogs really, you know, like they just are raring to go. And so they're super excited and, you know, the streets are lined with thousands of people. And then, uh, and then when the, the next weekend, when they did the ceremonial start of the Iditarod, I mean, you couldn't walk down the sidewalk. It was, 
it was like going in and out of a like a football game or something at a stadium it was really really packed and the same thing with the running of the reindeer i ran out there and tried to get a spot where i could film it a little bit just because i thought it was really funny and yeah it was just shoulder to shoulder you know half a dozen or more people deep all the way up and down the street did you have a lot of traffic coming in out? It's got to be because there's people just wanting to go check stuff out yeah. and just give them a hot cup of hot chocolate or a cup of coffee and they're probably happy as a clam to come in and check stuff out, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think if we would have had a few more days, we probably would have offered like hot cocoa or something. <laughs> but we, I think we were up until 2.30 in the morning the night before for Randy. And then even in the morning, we were adjusting lighting in the morning be- right before we unlocked yep. the door and let people in. So. We, it was definitely the bare minimum to get open. Mm-hmm. That's going to be super exciting, though. I mean, just that whole process. Because like I referred to earlier, you guys started thinking about this, what, last summer? And yeah. then it culminates, what, in February? Yeah. Is when yeah. you kind of made that decision? So you had six or eight months worth of just like, it's a go, it's a no-go. Oh, great, it's a go. Now we really got to go. Yeah. 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 All right. So in addition to your gallery, you guys are also going to continue doing the tours. Yep. Yep. Um, you're probably, did you say you're moving to Alaska or you're going to have a place in Alaska and still try to manage tours between the lower 48 and up there? Or how's, how, just give us a kind of snapshot into how this thing's going to go from here. We'll still do tours in the Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks in lower 48. Not, not as much as we have originally where we were offering them, you know, majority of the year. It's more, um, winter and spring right now and that's probably what it'll be going forward um, and then we have eight weeks of brown bear tours up here this spring that we're guiding um, so that's it's three different three or four different locations mm-hmm. um, and then we do we're doing a musk ox tour in the fall and then we're doing africa in december and then next spring then we'll do winter again in Yellowstone and then next spring we'll be adding Patagonia for Pumas. So we're, we're expanding everything. It's all, and we're going to keep adding more and more stuff. We're always working on, you know, what's the next location, what's the next tour we can offer. And, uh, so that's still going to, we're still going to be doing that full steam ahead. And, uh, but we are getting a place up here and it'll, I mean, we've been up here the last few summers. So, so it's just, kind of expanding on that like we'll be up here probably more the majority of the year but we'll still have have to go and do our other our other tours as well and you guys didn't drive up for i was thinking i was trying to put two and two together i'm like well so they drove the van up in the middle of whatever january february Mm -mm. and you know because i figured you'd have to haul a bunch of art or something but no you just flew up and then got everything set up yep yep we flew up and we we have to fly back down here shortly and we'll wait for a good weather window in the coming weeks to try to get back up as soon as we can. Ooh. So what have you learned? <laughs> oh my God. What haven't we learned? <laughs> oh yeah. It's crazy. I don't know. What's at the top of the list. Yeah. Um, I mean, having a storefront is a whole new adventure. You know, there's just, you don't think of things like, Oh, we need to get, internet hooked up in the space. Oh, we need a, you know, point of sale. And, you know, obviously we figured all those things out before we got here, but it's just all these little things that you, that are kind of secondary that, you know, you don't necessarily think about, you know, we have to have a way to play music in the space just so you have kind of that ambiance and environment, you know, so a lot of, a lot of little things that, that you're, that you don't think about. How do you display things that aren't hung on the walls? You know, we have a lot of tables and little stools and, and and benches and that kind of thing to kind of put baskets of prints out and 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 lean prints up against and stuff like that so you just kind of try to you have to figure out how to use the space and honestly like when we walk around and look at how it looks now i don't know how we did it because we didn't plan any of it we just threw we just started throwing stuff on the walls (laughs) (laughs) and 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 somehow in the end it looks pretty darn good (laughs) That's how we built the van too, though. I feel like we never really had a plan. We just like, well, let's start here and throw that in. And then we're like, shoot, I wish we wouldn't have done that. But well, that's the way it is. Build around <laughs> yeah. it now. Yeah. yeah. Paralysis yeah. by analysis. <laughs> if you spend too yeah, much time exactly. thinking about it, you never get it done. <laughs> exactly. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. You sent me a, uh, you know, cause I was following, not following the progress, but I was excited to hear what you guys 
were going to get put together. And I didn't want to bug you at all because I knew it had to be a ton of work. But you finally sent me a, a view around the gallery, and it's really cool. If, and as far as location, you guys are right downtown, yeah. kind of by the tourism thing, just one block down, right? And then there's yeah. like the Stewart's camera shop is in that same area. And then I don't know, what else would people recognize? There's some called Once in a Moose Lifetime, or I don't know what it is, what store? The most um, iconic thing is the Baldo statue is right out our front door and everybody loves to come see the Baldo statue. Um, and then they're also doing, they're putting in an archway pretty much like over our building. That's going to say like um, Alaska mushing district. So that'll go yeah. over the entire road. So um, that should be in, I hope by this summer. Yeah. Yeah, um, we're right next door to the Ferrandi building, which is the headquarters of the Ferrandi Festival. So that's really? probably the most prominent business yeah. down here that's that's right next to us. We're actually connected. It's all in one yeah, building, even though it doesn't look like it, because it's one of the historical downtown buildings. It was built in like 1910 or something like that. But So is the space big enough for you guys to do other things, like bring in uh, a I don't know, 20 people and talk about a trip or talk about a piece of art or talk about one of your images or what yeah. are some of the things that you guys want to do besides just having a, a point of sale place? Yeah, we would love to have events in here. Uh, they do a first Friday art walk every month um, on the first Friday of the month. Go figure. Um, but yeah, we'd love to host events in here, have people come down and talk. Maybe you'd want to come to a podcast in here at some point mm -hmm. or um, yeah, we could do a meet and greet yeah. or something like that. Or, you know. yeah. So we've had quite a number of ideas for people to come in and, like, give a presentation or, you know, share their work or things like that. So that's evolving. Or just do, like, a local photographer, like, story night where you come in and, mm -hmm. you know, have a, have a beer and everybody kind of just shares stories and gets to know each other kind of thing. Yeah, I think that would be like nonstop every week in the summer because there's enough people traveling in that I think that oh, would yeah. be kind of cool Yeah, for to sure. have yeah. something like that. Yeah, definitely. Wow. That's amazing. So what for your tours that you guys are doing in Alaska, are you having any openings or is there anything that we need to let people know about in case they want to go besides our bear tour? That we're still trying to do. <laughs> we we do have a couple openings for this summer. Uh, we're offering a discount right now, so if anybody reaches out, they can get two hundred fifty dollars off. Um, and that is at the end of June and beginning of July. At and this is a lodge trip, so very different experience from your guys' trip. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't even compare them. Um, but yeah, it's at a. We stay at a lodge at a historical cannery, so you get to really experience some Alaskan history, and then we boat to the bears um, each day. It's a fun experience. We have a ton of fun. Yeah. There's a sauna at, at the lodge, and last year we would go in and thoroughly cook ourselves and then jump into the ocean in the middle of the night. So <laughs> we have a lot of fun on yeah. these trips. <laughs> yeah, the, the family that owns it, they have it's uh, two brothers, and they, uh, they grew up there when their grandfather – was a commercial fisherman out of that cannery and then their father was the same. So like they grew up there and now they own it. And so they're a lot of fun and to see their passion about just the ecosystem and everything, you know, like that's, that's their home. And so they're really passionate about it and it's pretty special to, to be able to hang out with those guys and experience it. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty unique trip. The experience we have, like Kate said, we take a, a boat to the bears and we have the ability to photograph from the boat and get off and hike and, photograph with the bears on ground too so we get a look, get to mix a little bit of uh different experiences in there so with that trip do you guys start in anchorage and then is it a fly out so you fly like float plane or something out to the lodge or how's it how's that work yeah you have to get to kenai which there's some pretty there's really easy flight there with um grant aviation takes you right over there from the anchorage airport um and then it's a float plane over to the lodge yep yeah, but we we cover the float plane and everything. So if it starts and ends in Kenai and everything's included then. And that's got to be a pretty short flight on the float plane, right? Yeah, it's like 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. So how many days is that? Is that like a five-day? Uh, six days. Six yep. days. Yep. Wow. That, that sounds pretty fun. cool. Yeah. yeah. Sounds it like is fun. fun. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're excited to get back out there. We had a, we had a blast last year and – we're excited to get back out there and, and build on what we're doing there. And it's nice because we, we're the only ones at the lodge, our group. So we kind of have the full attention of the of the lodge and everything. And so it, it 
makes it really, really nice experience and really exclusive feel to it. So with that one, that's, is that, that's not all eight tours. You have other tours to other locations too, correct? Yep. Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. Yep. We have, we do, we do camping tours. We have two weeks of that in August. Um, that's for bears fishing the sockeye salmon that, that trips full. And then immediately after that, we have a, a week at a fly out lodge where we stay at the lodge and fly someplace new every day. Um, that trip is full this year. Both of those have openings in 2025. And then we have a private trip on a, on a boat. That's just a, a private couple that wanted to do their own thing that we're doing, doing a boat in the Katmai coast nice. immediately after that. So the picture that's behind you is from one of those areas, right? Yep. It is. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which is a very special time of year and you got to hit it just right to get it, to get that shot. Right? Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> and, and it doesn't happen every year either. Yeah. Right. So that's pretty amazing. So I know uh, last summer, kind of after your trips, you get, you were kind of talking, Adam, I know, especially your brain was already turning for next year and thinking of like ideas and images. But then we also kind of talked about video too. So maybe you don't have yep. to give away your, your uh, dream shots for <laughs> coming up year, but maybe explain kind of where video has jumped in. I know you guys were, you know, stills primarily, but video has kind of become a component, you know, whether that's the social media or I guess you could explain maybe where all that's benefited you guys. Yeah. I mean, we definitely are trying to do more video the more and more we get into this, both for social media and for, you know, higher end stuff. Um, we really, we have some things we, we definitely want to film. Um, I'd love to film like the photo behind us. We'd love to get some footage of that. But I also we uh, we're starting to work with a with a gimbal a little bit too. So we'd love to, especially off off of the boat that we're do, doing the tours with that first trip. I'd love to film with that gimbal off the front of the boat while we're going past the yeah. bear that's walking and stuff like that. Like that's really high up. I'd like to really execute that well. Um, just feel like it's a different shot. You know, it's going to feel like a flyover shot or a helicopter shot. If we, if we can get the right situation. So yeah, excited yeah. to do some unique things like that and get out there with some different things. And with Kate, both of us being able to get out there, we should be able to kind of tag team it. And You'll be able to both uh, hopefully <laughs> go things work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Less. one of us can hopefully focus more on video while the other mm-hmm. one is, you know, leading the group or something like that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So how's it work with the gallery then? Do you guys are gonna have to hire somebody to sit yeah. in the gallery, and then yep. you're yeah. just gonna have to like have every night of every week they're gonna have to come over to your house, and you're gonna have to learn every story behind every image, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need to memorize all the names, yep. exactly. Which that happened actually pretty fast, I will say. Yep. I know the name of every image in here for sure. Um, but yeah, it's definitely gonna take the right person. I think. We've got some friends. We might be able to tag team a few weeks here and there when we need to do some strategic trips to film some things. So hopefully we can find somebody. We know it'll come with some sacrifices too when it's not the tours. You know, there'll be times like this fall when we're not doing tours where maybe instead of both of, both of us going out and doing X, Y, Z, one of us mans the gallery for a week and the other person goes and goes and has some has some fun for a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Kate. We won't, we won't, we won't, we let's won't be honest. honest. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have a feeling that Kate's probably a better salesman of the images too. No, actually Adam is so slick. Is he? <laughs> I am so impressed with his skills. Really? Cause I'm all like, I get all shy about it. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm glad you like our stuff. Hee <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> and Adam's all like, well, if you're into this, you should really check this out. And he's like, well, if you're thinking about a paper print, you will remember you got to frame that. So you might as well just get a metal print because that's way easier. Comes ready to hang. And I'm just like, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not lying about anything. It's all just, you know, by the time you, especially when you get a bigger paper print, by the time you get it framed, the cost gets really close to a metal print. And so I just make sure people are kind of aware like what the final cost might be once they're done framing it. And then it's happened more than I thought it would where people end up going with a metal 
Cause they're like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, like, let's just get it this way. It's quicker and easier. And, and the metal will hold up better over time. Well, it's a hundred percent. When I used to sell the prints and you'd send them rolled in a tube, n- nobody can handle it and they have to pull it out and look at it. The minute they do, they crease it. Yep. Yep. And then it's like, you'll see, I see those creases forever. Yep. And then yep. I tell people, just take this tube directly to your framer and don't. Yep. But even framers these days don't have the touch that yep. you would want a professional framer to have to not crease an image. And they're like, most yep. people wouldn't even see it or know about it. But man, as the photographer, as the artist, you get really defensive about that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yep. there's all that kind of stuff that you got to think about. But that's awesome, Adam, that you're like the, the – and I think – it's easier to sell your own stuff too. Right. And there's just that passion and there's those really cool stories and yeah. you guys have some iconic images and it's gotta be fun to be able to talk about, you know, so I woke up and I had breakfast and then I hiked down to the river and then <laughs> I saw a bear doing backflips and whatever it was. And the stories just start coming out and then people are like, really? And then what, you know, so it's yeah. really kind of cool. Yeah, it, it's been so fun to talk to people, but then also hear stories from them too. So everybody feels like they want to share their stories. So it's been really fun to hear what people have to say and like what people enjoy going on doing. That's been, that's been really enjoyable. Yeah. So are you guys still working with the nonprofit? And if yes. so, give us a kind of an idea of what's going on there and what future plans are for that. Yeah, things are slower than we would like. Um, I think that's just the way that it is with nonprofits, but we've been applying for some grant funding because we'd like to take a group of like future like park rangers out to do things like bear trips and educate them in the field with bears um, so that we don't have people running these programs who are scared of bears or, you know, have never really experienced it for themselves. So we think having that firsthand experience is really critical yeah. for the people who will be making decisions about our parks and about the animals. So, yeah. And if you're not familiar, our nonprofit is for the love of bears, which is a bear conservation nonprofit. So we still have the initial, our initial initiative was called cleaned up for love of bears, which is a self certification. Basically you're pledging to keep your property clean and secure attractants in a way that you know, helps bears stay out of trouble. And the idea behind it is rather than, you know, there's been a lot of focus with the things that have happened around the parks down in the lower 48 and out in California, like Tahoe and, and those areas where, you know, they're passing legislation to make people have to have bear proof trash cans. But the problem there is, is it's all negative reinforcement, right? Somebody doesn't want to follow it or they don't follow it. It's a, you know, finger pointing and slap on the wrist kind of thing. And we're just, and it's very hard to get those laws passed regardless of what level you're talking about. So we just wanted to do something that can be applied across, you know, the country and anywhere. So if people take pride in their property and then, you know, that expands their community, they talk to their neighbors about that, then hopefully we can make a positive difference and just do the right thing on our own. And people are lifting each other up rather than pointing fingers. Mm-hmm. So that's our, that's our main program still. What Kate was talking about getting college students out to see bears firsthand. That's what we've, that's what we're trying to get funding for. Um, and that's, we're calling that bear EDU is uh so it's kind of like a bear education program. And that would probably pair with like a curriculum or some kind of class thing that we could do with, with younger kids in school too. Um, so those are kind of the things that we're working on there. We are getting ready to launch uh, like a street team kind of thing where you can uh, take fl- print off flyers from our website or, you know, make a small donation and we can send you printed off flyers and stickers and you go around and ask local businesses if you're allowed to, you know, put our flyer up that kind of explains our programs up just to kind of tell the community about it. That's something that we should be announcing soon this spring as the bears start to come out, which is now. Yeah. <laughs> We're starting to see bears all over now. So, yep, I saw a story on the news this morning. The bears are coming out in Durango already. So, yeah. Yellowstone had a grizzly sighting already in the middle of the park. Really? Wow. Yeah, grizzly. 
Yeah. Well, and I think it's just so important for that kind of stuff. And just being proactive is a good thing. I like that stage two idea of, of educating future park rangers because there is such a, people just have the wrong idea about bears for the most part. And it's not because it's just lack of education is what it ends up being. And then, you know, on social media, everybody wants to make the big, big bad bear look all ferocious and it's generally not the case, but that's a cool thing. I wonder if the park service would help you guys with that. Not necessarily in the grant, but maybe even in just, uh, um, you know, being part of the program saying we would love to have this as part of an education curriculum for a future ranger. And that would validate your guys's grant yeah. proposals. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, for sure. We definitely have a lot of uh, hopes of being able to work with, you know, different levels of, of, you know, whether it's fish and game at the state level in whatever state you're in or, you know, park service or department of interior, we'd love to be able to do things that they're, you know, maybe not taking on as a program, but willing to endorse and say like, yeah, that's a great idea. Like, you know, like, let's go, let's go with that. And we, we really like the idea if we can get that program off the ground, if we do it at, at a community college level. So we're not, you know, hopefully you're taking, kids out that would never be able to have that ability to go on a trip like that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yep. cause I mean, yeah, we've, cause you're talking like a three or four or $5,000 trip to go out yep. and experience these bears. Yeah. And you, you know, a lot of people just don't at, at a young person like that doesn't have that kind of money yep. to go do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's the thought. And I mean, we have, we've, we've met, you know, people that are in, in that field doing field work that everything they did was on paper or in a lab or, any animals they worked with were zoo animals or captive animals. They, you know, they've never seen a wild bear and they're a bear biologist. And it's like, okay, well let's, let's get some, you know, experience in the field, not just like that you're going to learn something striking, but to make that connection and to have that passion with that experience to see these wild bears and, and be able to be in their presence. Like, like we've all experienced. It's, you know, it's pretty special. It'll change a person. Yeah, I think it really does change a person, right? And you just and the bears are all different. I mean, city bears are different than country bears, and yep. you know the lower forty-eight bears are different than Alaska bears. And but the thing is, with the, the lower forty-eight, there's a lot of bears. I mean, I can remember back in Colorado where when I grew up, you would never see a bear. Yeah, and the population has just exploded. So mm -hmm. it's something that you definitely. You have to learn how to coexist, and it's not that hard. It's just yeah. being a little mindful. Take your bird feeders down. Yep. Take, put your trash inside. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, like, for yeah. Sure. Those are two really simple things to do that would curb a huge percentage of the problem. Yeah, for sure. Well, very cool. What else is going on? What else is that we haven't talked about that um, – I mean, I don't know how you guys do what you do. I mean, it's like – Okay, so we run a nonprofit. We just opened up at the gallery. We're going to start these tours. Oh, and by the way, we're going to start uh, mountain lion tours in Patagonia. <laughs> and let's see, in 2026, we're going to Mars. Well, I'll tell you, we found a way to clone yourself. So I just have other versions of me. I, I'm serious. It's monster and beer. That's how I live, monster yeah. and beer. Depending, depending <laughs> on the time of day. <laughs> Yep. Brandon's holding up his monster. So <laughs> it's monster in the morning and beers in the afternoon. Yeah, it's yeah. up, up, up all day long and then straight down with the beer. <laughs> I can't wait to come up there and hang out in the gallery and drink a beer and talk about the images and have some fun and do a podcast there. It would be amazing. It would, or yeah. even just yeah. a story night. You know, we started the podcast and actually you guys texted me. We did that one little episode with the story behind the image. And you, you were like, we really like that. Yeah. And that kind of a little story with a group of 20, I don't know how many people could fit in your gallery, but if 20 people could fit, that's kind of a fun thing to do when you have somebody, you know, all like-minded people and you're telling them the story yeah. about this amazing thing. I can just yeah. see that being a lot of fun and just a good vibe. And, and it would obviously include some beers yeah, and some non-alcoholic so beers too, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, folks. it'd be fun. I think it would be great to have a sense of community with the photography community here. And it just, 
everybody we've told that idea to, they're like, oh, I'd, I'd for sure come to that. So right. I think we're excited to get that going. Yeah. I don't know when we will get that going. <laughs> we're kind of just <laughs> flying by the seat of our pants right now, but yeah, hopefully this yeah. summer. Yeah. Well, I'm sure this first year is going to be a huge learning curve too, right? Yeah. Because there's got to be a lot of things that you can do that you haven't even thought about yet, working with yeah. the cruise ships and all that kind of stuff. And I had a buddy that had a gallery done in the Captain Cook. And that was the predominantly all his uh, sales were people that would come and stay in the Captain Cook. But I think most yep. of those people are going on tours or the train or something. Yep. They're using that as their base. And then it just provided the traffic. So you guys will get a lot of natural traffic like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think it'll evolve with all kinds of other stuff that you guys can do. When did you decide like we're, we're going to get a studio? Like what precipitates? So you're like your photographers, right? And you take photos and everything. But like when... Or have you, has it been something like, when I was five, I knew I was going to have a studio. Like, what was it? I think it's something we've joked about a lot over the years. We're like, oh, what if we had a gallery or what if we did that? And, you know, we were just trying to think about something that would complement the tour as well mm -hmm. and be able to drive things forward, but also, like, diversify our income. Because mm -hmm. you think about, like, COVID happened, a lot of people took a huge hit with tours. And so we're like, well, we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. So what else are we going to do to try to, you know, vary that a little bit. So if something happens, we're not totally dead in the water. And I don't know, we just, it, we initially we had looked at Homer and we went to Homer right away when we got here last summer and we were like, man, I just can't make that drive all the time. Like Homer is amazing and I'd love to be out there. But in order to go anywhere else in the world, you have to drive five hours first. And eh, I don't think so. Yeah. Right. So then we started to look really hard at Anchorage um, and things just kind of fell into place. We only found this space because Adam threw his cell phone into the river you remember this eric <laughs> eric was there remember my phone wasn't working no oh, yeah <laughs> last, last, last summer when i because i filmed this film the salmon with it yep. yeah so we can't we, we rushed back up here so i could get a new phone and that that was that we where we ended up parking had us walk by this spot and that's when we saw that's when we spotted it even after we had already been downtown and looked at all the free spaces and we were like, there's nothing here for us. And then Adam dunked his phone in the river and <laughs> yep. here we are. And you walked past Fate. it and it was like, oh my gosh, this is it. Yeah. We were like, how did we not see this? And Adam was leaving on a trip the next day and he was like, Kate, you have to go see this place while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And that's what made us miss the first opportunity is that I waited till Adam got back and we like crunched the numbers and tried to form a business plan. We were trying to be smart about it. Um, and yeah, they were like, Nope, sorry. Some coffee shop is going to go in there. So too bad. So sad. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that just cool. goes to show you it was meant to be right. Because that yeah. all yeah. fell through and then comes turn, turn around 360 degrees and here you are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would have been nice to have from August until February to get ready <laughs> instead of January to February. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you guys just shortened the pain. I mean, otherwise it would have been like months and months of pain. Now it was just like two months of pain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. But to answer your question, I don't really know where we got the idea. It was just like a series of like, serendipitous moments that kind of led us here and we just it just felt right so we did it yeah and I, th I think a lot of it is when you get in a mindset especially with something that's like big and life-changing um which we've done a couple times you know i had a career in aerospace manufacturing before we started the tour company and i just up and quit that one day i didn't even give two weeks notice i just was like i'm done see you later and left and uh we never looked back and the tour company we had a we had a few basically somebody called and booked like five straight days and I couldn't do it while working and it was like mm -hmm. you either take this tour and quit or you know you keep hoping to book things around when you're working and it just you can't be halfway in so right. it made us kind of rip the bandaid off and do that and and this you know when we first came up here like Kate said we were looking at Homer and we were talking to our friend Dave. Um, 
and he, you know, we were kind of showing him the space that we were kind of thinking about. And we've kind of had this idea for a while because Kate's still been working her job remotely that the easiest way for Kate to, to quit is not adding twice as many tours because that's not super realistic. Mm -hmm. It's adding something else. So it's been, you know, like the gallery is the easiest way for us to add another, another revenue stream. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've been kind of kicking that around a little bit and just last spring, literally the day we were leaving Yellowstone to come up here for the summer, we were talking to our friend Dave and he, he was like, this is stupid. You guys should just do it. Like you're stupid if you don't do it. And so we left Yellowstone with this idea, like we're going to open a gallery, like this is it. And by the time we got up here, things had changed a little bit. We did some digging. We looked at the space. It wasn't what we were hoping it would, would be, um, and so we kind of backed off of it a little bit and then we got busy with tours. So it was, wasn't super easy to look for things, but then it, you know, it's a super weird thing to be on, on a camping trip for two weeks that I, that I was guiding and Kate's looked at this space and we can only talk to each other with an inreach. So like out of, out of order text messages, you know, like nothing's making 120 sense. 120 characters. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and she's trying to tell me what's going on and I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, am I going to come back and we're just going to have this space already? Like, is it going to be signed? Is it, you know? And so she's trying to give me the details. And one of our friends had come out and hung out with Kate a little bit before she flew out and did our trip with me. And she was like, Kate's obsessed with the space. Like, like you, you guys are getting it. I don't see how you guys aren't getting it. So then you're kind of in this mindset, like, okay, this is happening, especially where we can't really sit down and talk about it for two weeks. And so I'm in this mindset, like, is it going to be done already when I get there? Is this, are we just going to jump on it and do it? Like what, you know, like, where are we at? Like, is, is everything going to be completely different when I get back? And so then we get back and we kind of really chew on it. And it takes us a few days. Like Kate said, we run the numbers and we make sure like, can we financially do this? Is this going to be a really big mistake or is this something that's plausible? And, you know, we got where we're like, com we felt comfortable with it and yeah, we messaged a realtor and he's like, yeah, somebody signed an intent to lease and we were just crushed because you're in this mindset of like, right. Our lives are changing right now. Yep. And then it just kind of gets ripped out from under you and that's kind of, but, but it's kind of a blessing at the same time. Cause it's like, this is definitely something that you need to do if you're that, kind of crushed over not doing it because it's mm -hmm. terrifying. You're talking about doing it. You're thinking about changing everything. That's terrifying. But when you pull that out and, and it feels like, you know, kind of soul crushing, then it's, then you, you know that you probably need to do it. So when it came, yeah. we didn't really him and how much in December, did we? I mean, we talked no. a little bit. We were kind of like, no, it's Adam happening. was like taking a shower and I like rushed into the bathroom and I was like, hello. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, and we were like, yeah, we're doing it. Like, there wasn't even a decision. It was done. Well, let's be truthful. I wasn't taking a shower. It was much cruder than that. <laughs> just kicked the door open. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> just trying to preserve your dignity. Honey. <laughs> There's no dignity left. <laughs> you knew it wasn't a meme. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's a way better story that way. Anyways, <laughs> I think I was with Kate a couple of days in there when she was going back and forth with you because you yeah. were out in the field, and and I'm like, Kate, just go do it, just do it. And but she wanted to wait, and I get it, but I was like, just do it. I feel like that's always your advice, Mike. It's like that's always Mike, his advice, Mike. Yeah. Mike, should I buy a Venice two for ninety thousand dollars? Just do it. Just do It'll it. It'll be fine. It's just, money. Just, just do it. You don't want to live your life with a regret that you never did it. <laughs> yeah, I think I told Eric. I was like, just quit your job. <laughs> now he's yeah. sitting in, with that as any lights on. Look at him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he, can't, he, can't, he can't pay the power bill. <laughs> We're laughing too hard. Uh, <laughs> Yep. He's got one light. <laughs> oh, that's, I, know, I that's can't a control it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you guys did it. And I think it looks the image I saw and you guys send me some stuff. Cause I want to put it in the podcast, but yeah. And I guess, Oh, here's the thing we can talk about. I just got back on social media today for the first, I was on Instagram for the first time in, I don't know how long, a couple of years. 
and it's just to promote the podcast, right? And promote some of the stuff we're doing. And I don't, I don't understand it all. I mean, linking and collaborating and blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah. How's and how's that stuff going for you guys? Because you guys were very prolific there for a while, and I've been off of it so long. So my question is, just because I'm not familiar with what's going on, are you guys still doing a lot of social media, or yeah. is it something that just you you feel like you have to do it? And how's yeah. it working? And how's it going now? I mean, it's it's like a full time job in itself, trying to keep up with all the social media. Um, but I mean, it's you have to, especially like with the with the tours. It's a it's a it's a thing that we have to be be doing all the time i mean we post especially on instagram in like we post every single day we post something um it's a lot of reels but you know and we try we still post a lot of stills we do regular posts with stills every you know multiple times a week um but i mean they the algorithms like the reels a lot. So we, we do a lot of that stuff, but that's usually just stuff that we do with our phone while we're in the field. So I feel like it's more of like behind the scenes kind of, kind of look like this is what we're filming or this is this cool thing that happened. It's not necessarily out of the, out of the video camera or out of the mirrorless cameras. So we're still doing that too. And I think with Kate, um, being able to get more involved, you know, the gallery is a lot of work for both of us, but Kate having all being able to add all of her bandwidth, you know, we're going to get more into the video. We're going to get more into doing more of the video on the social medias and, and, and you, you know, we'll start diving into YouTube and stuff like that and, and seeing what we can, you know, we'll see where that goes. I mean, we've, I won't lie. We haven't had a plan for any of this. Somehow we got here just by <laughs> throwing throwing spaghetti at the wall and doing what sticks, you know. So it's uh we'll we'll see what we'll see what takes off um what takes off with some things, but but no, I think I think video uh, obviously with all the reels and the and TikTok and and all and even YouTube doing YouTube shorts and stuff like that, like that kind of stuff is clearly evident that all of them want more video than than they want still content. So, um, I think regardless of what we do in the future, video is going to be a big part of it. So, so are you guys on TikTok and YouTube shorts and Instagram? Is that it? Or do you do? We're not, stuff? we're not doing YouTube yet. Um, we have a YouTube account, but we haven't been posting to it yet. Um, that's definitely in the plans in, in the near future when we can start delving into some of the, a lot of this video that we've filmed over the years. Um, but we are, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, and we're on Facebook. So those are, those are the big three. And then threads, if anybody does that. But I, think, I feel like that's just Instagram light. So. But how do you know when one of these is going to take off? Like yeah. we poo-pooed Instagram forever. We're like, it's going to die. It's never going to make it. And then we're like, oh, crap. Yeah, we should have done that. <laughs> I hated the square format, you know, like when you didn't, mm -hmm. if you, I didn't want to edit my photos as a square. And then once they kind of got away from that and let you go at least eight by 10, if you were vertical and then let you go landscape orientation in your two by three ratio, then I'm like, all right, we can deal with this, you know, but before you had to, you had to put borders on everything to make it work. And that was super frustrating because I thought it looked, looked crummy, you know, but, uh, but yeah, Instagram's our, our biggest our biggest driver of everything right now. So that, and that's the one that seems to grow the fastest for whatever reason. We've gotten lucky a few times with silly reels that I put funny songs on. So that seems like we get a, get a viral one every once in a while and it helps us grow. So I'd see, I don't know music. I can't even, I don't have any clue on any of this music. And I think it, Eric is the one that should do that. Cause he's Mr. Music aficionado. So well, now that's he's, the hard he's part. into the obscure stuff. <laughs> well, the hard thing is too, is like the licensing and then, yep. you know, I don't follow it that closely, but like the licensing for a lot of music for certain, you know, labels was being pulled. So then are you going to yep. lose like stuff there? So I, that's, yeah, it's hard to know. Like you almost need to do own everything just to future proof it, but that's so much more work when like yeah. a catchy trending tune can really pop something off. So I mean, like your guys' yep. shorts, you've had some, or reels be really successful with tons of views and that could easily get you monetized on YouTube. But I don't oh, yeah. all the rules and things bouncing between the two. It's tough to know. Do you invest just in one? And it's really, really tough because especially I feel like we have, we have a harder 
problem on TikTok with it where TikTok likes to just mute your audio because mm-hmm. they'll have a licensing issue, but they clearly have a robot that does it because you'll have just the audio from like I've had video. Typically if I do something where the sound of the video is sufficient, like we have a lot of videos from Brooks falls. And so the rushing water is the sound. So I'll just leave that kind of like an ASMR kind of thought. Mm. And it usually does pretty well. It usually does better with that water sound than it does where if I put a music over it, but I've had TikTok mute those saying that we're violating copyright of sound. And I'm like, it's my sound. How, you know, it's nature. So, yeah. Like, like that's so I think it's, it's kind of hit or miss, but I, it, yeah, you gotta, you try to catch on with the trends. Like if there's a, you know, there's, there's entire accounts on TikTok that are, these are the trending sounds right now. And I sit here and play the sounds and tell people to use these sounds. And then those sounds will have, you know, copyright stuff and they get muted. So it's, it's hard to say, but all you can, Instagram has been pretty good. If you can find it on Instagram and you're not taking it from somebody else's video where it's an original sound, then it's, then you're typically good to go. We haven't had any issues with Instagram with any music or any, any sound clips in a while. So so that's that that seems like that's been better but yeah TikTok definitely they seem like they're all over the place. <laughs> so is that a recent development where some of the like is music being taken off now like currently where you they were doing you could do whatever and now you can't? Well, I think what what was happening was I think a lot of times people would edit a clip outside of one of the social media sites and add music to it through that. And if it's something that Instagram or TikTok or Facebook doesn't have licensing for then they can get in trouble so they end up taking it down or, or or they'll mute your video and so i think that's where you run into more problems but if you're just going into the app and using the sounds that they have available if they're available they should have a licensing for it because they're putting it they're making it available to you on the app so so that's where typically i try not to take audio from other people's video um cuz you can just save somebody's audio off of the video they have and then reuse it. But I, that, I think that's usually where you're going to run into problems. If you just search for audio clips or song clips and stuff, when you're making a reel, then it's usually Instagram showing you what they have permission to, for you to use. So it's probably a lot like the stock music that we use. Whereas yeah. if we produce it right now with that music, we're good forever. And that's probably the case with YouTube or I mean, yeah. Instagram now. Right. So even yeah. if it's not usable next year, as long as you did it in the year, they had a license for it. Yeah. Probably good. Yeah. The, the, and, and the hard thing is, is like, if you have your stock sound account, if you make something outside of like say TikTok. They don't seem to care if you have permission. They're just going to mute that sound if if they don't have permission for it. So they'll tell you. There's I think there's a process where you can try to like give them proof that you have the copyright permissions or whatever. But I mean, it's a TikTok video, so <laughs> right. How much time do you want to spend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to start singing on all mine. There you That's go. Going to be I the new. That's going to be. Do you have a cowboy audio. hat for that? Because I feel like it's going to be a country <laughs> we, song. We will. We'll do that. We'll do some country. <laughs> we might do some death metal. We might do some. Uh, I don't know ballerina stuff. Right, we're going to keep. We're going to some ballerina stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what kind of music that is, but you know that floaty kind of fluty stuff. <laughs> You know, if you're shooting butterflies, you see him or something. with his cowboy boots doing a little <laughs> <laughs> black song. I, mean, I, 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 feel, I feel like you're going to be driving around in a in a in a tutu in the in the Bronco with the top off, just doing the just making a video. I, well, I'm looking for the next viral moment, uh, and if it takes yeah. the, that, I will oh, the, probably... that'll be viral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is if you can get rid of shame, a lot of these viral things become pretty easy because we have quite a few. Mike, you've heard some of our ideas that we know will go viral, but I don't oh, think yeah. there's enough alcohol in the world for me to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have to happen around the campfire one night when we all have a beer or two. And, you know, maybe Brandon will be there with his lighting rig from a Jeep and then we'll we'll just set up a studio and start recording. <laughs> 
All right. So, is there anything else? I, I'm glad we talked about it. That because I got so much work to do there. Oh, I have I have one more. I, I'm going to change subjects on you though. Okay, so you, you're going to drive up. You're driving in the middle of winter. Like, do you just go for it, or do you have like a checklist of like, yes, this is in the the van, or like, just walk us through that? Because we on the last podcast, which is not public, <laughs> we had some issues, some vehicle issues, <laughs> and so that's just top of mind right now because you're driving however many thousand miles that is. Just walk us through that. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty accustomed to being in remote areas, so we do travel with an extra, like, bin in the back of the van of, like, safety-type things. So we've got, like, a foldable shovel or two in there, and we've got giant toe straps, and we've got the recovery recovery strips and... um, you know, tools. We've got a pretty con- comprehensive toolkit. Yeah, I mean, we, we we're kind of spoiled because we primarily live in the van, so we have a lot of things that would be extra for you to take in your vehicle that we just have. You know, like if we get stuck for days, we have food and water, we have power, right. we have you know, we have heat, so we're not in immediate danger that way. Um, We bring, you know, we try to always have an air compressor with us, you know, so if we get a flat or if we we can try to repair a flat or air our tires back up if we have to. Um, And, you know, we're lucky we have Starlink on the van, so we're never, we're never like disconnected, you know, we can always get a hold of somebody, but we try to, we try to get in, you know, to the mechanic right before planning to make that drive and have, you know, get oil changed tires checked you know take a look and make sure there's nothing glaring that's gonna that's gonna you know like oh that's gonna break real soon like don't don't drive like stay a week and get that taken care of so we try to do that because that's you know that's obviously the biggest like worry is that you have something like break break um yeah yeah we've been pretty good about doing that inspection i think that is important too I think last year we found out that we had um, something that was potentially like weakening in our suspension and we ended up buying parts and having them with us because we couldn't actually get in to get the repair done, but we had the parts if we needed them. So then at least if we broke down somewhere with a mechanic, we could be like, could you put these in? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we just try to have all. I, I mean, I do it in our our tour vehicle too. I have a I have a small tool kit yep. that you know just folds up and stays in a box. I have tow straps and I have I have recovery boards in there. We keep you know those rechargeable jumper packs. We always have one of those in any vehicle that we have, and make sure the battery is topped off on that because that's just a super easy like get you out of trouble if you end up leaving the lights on or yeah something on that drains your battery they're so small now if you haven't seen those tiny compact ones they're not even you know they're teeny they're only like i don't know like that big yeah. and they'll jump you so everybody should have one of those all the time and they're so much better than they were i remember i had one in like high school or something and it was so crappy it would die you know within a couple of weeks of charging it it wasn't wasn't worth anything but they're so good now you charge them once every six months and it's you know it's ready to go so that's that's nice and i mean if you if you're not like us and have starlink if you have a satellite messenger or anything like that like we do carry the in reach around a lot of times if we're in the tour vehicle and not with the van and we're going in someplace remote where we're worried about something happening where we might not see people it might we don't have it on all the time we're not using it all the time but if you have it with you can at least turn it on and get a yeah. get a message to somebody that can help you know help you out if you need to yeah cool very good anything else you guys want to add uh just a quick take uh what do you think about ai oh I mean, uh. I, I'm all for like the noise reduction and that stuff. Um, I not a fan of sky replacement and stuff like that. You know, like if it's, if it's something that creates something that didn't happen, um, that's, that's where, but I mean, we, we try to, all of our photographs, we try to represent what we saw with our eyes. Mm-hmm. So that's just never been something that we've been into where we're like, Oh, well, we could, create this from the file that I made. It's, you know, we're, we're trying to be 
as true to the photo that we took as possible. So, so I, and while that's not our choice to do that, like we support people who want to, but we also believe in the truth in captioning that if it's not real, that you should say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause we really believe in the art of photography and getting it right in the camera as much as you possibly can. So I think it just, it's hard for us to see these images that we've spent, years trying to get and people just go create in you know photoshop or something like that it's a little bit heartbreaking yeah 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 i think it's gonna have to be i I hope it turns i hope it turns where i don't know there's some sort of it's like captioning where you just say yes this is a legit photograph and i can prove it by the raw image or something that where the tables turn and everybody that's out there creating a completely artificial image or an image that's just been heavily doctored, you know, there's got to be some differentiator that just says, because it is so good, it's going to fool 95% of the people out there. Well, maybe even 100% with some of the stuff. But, yeah, I, like you, I've always just, like, if there's a branch, I don't even take branches out. I don't do anything. I just, hmm. you guys have heard the podcast before. If it isn't done in 10 seconds, I'm out. You know, I yeah. don't, I don't want to mess with it. Yeah. So and video is even harder to take stuff out. So yeah. I don't even mess with it there. So you just got to yeah. get it right in the camera. And well, hopefully and really that'll un- win out. The really unfortunate thing that we're starting to see a little bit on social media, just on our accounts is because of the AI stuff, we've, it, it hasn't happened a lot, but we've been, I've had people accuse us of, well, like of the big moose that we were spending time with this fall. Like we, we've had people say that moose is too big. That's AI. That's not, that's not a real moose. And it's just like, I can show you files upon files of the same moose. Like it's clearly, you know, and so it like, that's, I just, I hate that, that we have to explain, you know, like yeah, now you're things can be it. that. Yeah. 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 Things yeah. can be good. You know, like the image behind us, you know, people have, we've, not a lot, but there's been some like, oh, well, that's not real. You know, you that's AI. You created that scene with all those fish. And it's like, well, or we just put the time in to actually get it, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe uh, much like starting a nonprofit, it's like starting a whole like water stamp or a what like, watermark that yeah. just signifies that, yes, this is a legit image. But it'd be so hard because it's only self-policing and, you know, there's going to be people that don't follow the rules and well yeah it's the same with ethics and wildlife you know Mm -hmm. we shouldn't have to say that we're ethical photographers but people assume you know the worst of you if you don't so yeah yeah it's hard i do have some hope there's some programs being developed that hopefully become easy for everybody to grab and easy for people to find um that are basically it's um putting information in your image file that makes it so the AI can't learn from your files, mm-hmm. regardless if you're telling Adobe that they're allowed to, you know, you can opt out of that mm-hmm. on Adobe where you don't let them use your image to create their AI generated stuff. But they're, you know, when your images are out there, there's different ways that people can get a hold of them to do whatever. So there, uh, I know there's multiple people working on software that they're planning on making free to the market. I think that basically where you save it in, with your file when you when you edit you won't see it but it makes it destructive to ai so that they can't get uh, they can't get usable information from it so hmm. that that's hopeful you know yeah it's a new approach to be interesting that's it i'm just going to do ballerina cowboy boot iphone images TikToks. and if they want to steal them steal away i'll be ready with the gimbal yeah we'll get the gimbal out we'll, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be slow motion very dramatic <laughs> Oh man. Well, thanks for coming on guys. We really appreciate it. I, I, um, we'll put links to your website, links to your social media links to on the website is probably where they can find out about all the tours. Right. Mm -hmm. And then links to the gallery. Do you guys have a separate website for the gallery or is it going to be the same website? If you get to one website, you can get to them all. So you just need to, you just need one. Yeah. We'll send everything over to you and we'll send you a video of the gallery. Okay. Well, we'll put all that stuff in. Eric, do you have anything else? You know, you talk about like trying or trying to go viral or whatever and get attention through social media stuff, but you guys have won some awards, right? With the the image, I think the one behind you, especially. So 
anyone doubts it, that was already <laughs> peer reviewed for authenticity. Yeah. But yeah, of course, you know, you guys yeah, have had we had some to give awesome them everything. awards. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. What, what you. did you get an award for that image behind you? Yeah. We did, yeah. What was that? Mm -hmm. That was highly commended in Wildlife Photographer of the Year 58. Oh, sweet. Nice. As, well, as well as we have that image, uh, we don't share it a lot because people don't like it as much, but we have an image of a black bear with an elk calf that it had caught right. in a tree. Um, that one was also highly commended in, in the same year of Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Um, we just don't post that one all over social media because mm. we tend to get a lot of uh, – <laughs> negative feedback on that one it's yeah. not it's not all it's not, not all disney princesses so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nature people yep. yeah yeah yep. all right well thanks for coming on guys we will see you soon when we come up when i come back up to alaska and you guys are probably seeing eric while you're up there so yeah if you need any help when you're down here holler and if not we'll see you back in alaska in May. definitely awesome. thanks, thanks so much for having yeah, us thanks for having us guys